गर्मी इतनी बढ़ती जा रही है बाहर काम करना मुश्किल होता है हमारे पास ए सी है नहीं है बहुत परेशानी होती है With the growing heat and you know all the changes in the atmosphere, you just cannot imagine going out anywhere without an air-conditioned vehicle. Last April, I got the AC installed, and uh, AC was not uh, a common thing a few years back. But now it's such a big necessity that every class of people has a AC. Almost everyone has a AC at their home. Client, if they come, if the AC facility is not there. सलून में नहीं है तो क्लाइंट आना ही पसंद नहीं करेंगे इन माई थ्री डेकेट ऑफ वर्किंग एक्सपीरियंस आई हैव फाउंड दैट इन माई अर्लियर ईयर्स वी कुड वर्क विद अ फैन एंड नॉट बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन द एयर कंडीशनिंग बट इन टूडेज एनवायरमेंट वी डेफिनेटली नीड एन एयर कंडीशन ऑफिस एंड ऑफकोर्स अलॉन्ग विद इट कम्स द प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ द एम्प्लॉयज India is among the fastest growing economies in the world. It is also one of the hottest. In the face of growing heat stress, India recognizes that the need for cooling is now greater than ever. The government and the industry are working to meet the aspirations of its people to provide cooling for India's blistering summers. Warming temperatures over the years will see air conditioner sales rise from 2 million units in 2006 to over 30 million in 2040 ACs today use refrigerants known as hydrofluorocarbons or HFCs We started using HFCs as replacements of the commonly used refrigerants chlorofluorocarbons and hydrochlorofluorocarbons whose emissions were depleting the ozone layer This transition was a result of the Montreal Protocol a landmark environmental agreement where all countries agreed to phase down the use and production of ozone depleting substances however over time the world realized that hfcs though ozone friendly emit considerable greenhouse gases that warm the planet india is projected to become one of the biggest ac markets globally With increasing incomes and heat stress, the combined air conditioning demand in residential and commercial use is expected to increase over 10-fold by 2038. With rising demand for ACs, HFC emissions will only increase. So paradoxically, our attempt to cool ourselves will heat the climate even more. To contain this HFC induced warming in October 2016 India and 196 other countries committed to the Kigali amendment within the Montreal protocol Kigali where environmental ministers are gathering for a historical summit As per this agreement India will start phasing down the use of HFCs after the year 2028 To enable this phase down, India's specific HFC emissions and its implications have become a focus of inquiry. For over 6 years now, the Council on Energy, Environment and Water has been studying various aspects related to India's HFC strategies. At CEW, we realized on the basis of our own research that the world needed to have an agreement on phasing down hfcs so we were privileged to have sent a delegation to the kigali meeting india uh, is the first actually country in the world that's come out with a draft national cooling action plan that looks at room air conditioning that looks at projections of demand for uh, cold chain that looks at commercial air conditioning when we look at policy questions at the council our objective is to find solutions so the primary question that came to our mind was in the past when we have transitioned away from other uh, uh, climate unfriendly uh, refrigerants who suffered who paid up how long did it take to receive the money did the workers get retrained did factories shut down what happened to them 
if we can understand that then we can focus on the second question that arises in our minds which is based on these lessons what might be the challenges going forward and then the question the third big question that arises for us is if we have identified these challenges what are we going to do about it should we finance some of it ourselves should we collaborate with other countries should we develop alternative technologies should we wait until someone else has developed the technologies should we offer india as a laboratory for testing out at scale cleaner alternative refrigerants these are critical policy choices that again can't be determined top down they can only be decided through a consultative process that draws in policy makers draws in industry draws in civil society draws in research organizations and that is the purpose of our latest research which we are conducting in collaboration with the norwegian environment agency well if a These are greenhouse gases contributing to global warming. So it's uh, very important that we uh, restrict the use of it and gradually phase out the use of, of greenhouse gases. So we'd like to share the the uh, technological knowledge we have and uh, cooperate with Indian partners to 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 develop the technology in this field. We also think actually that India can be a leader in 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 this field for for uh, other developing countries. So if India succeed in in finding alternatives to FHCs, that will be a very big contribution globally. But it will also be a very important signal to other countries that it can be done. It is widely accepted that air conditioning and refrigeration sectors. need an overhaul to successfully transition away from hfcs industry will lie at the center of this transition in deploying alternatives as well as incorporating changes in many parts of the supply chain if we don't have any policy then uh, there will be different companies will be going for different refrigerants different machineries and there will be a cost difference and there will be Not only for industry, it will be down the line also. As a person from industry, मुझे लगता है जब भी कोई technology आए refrigeration air conditioning में तो ground level के ऊपर जितने भी technician होते हैं उन सबको proper training मिलनी चाहिए ताकि वो उनको समझ सके और अपने काम में implement कर सके मेरा suggestion ये है कि जो भी gases अगर आप change कर रहे हैं तो उसमें मैं ये चाहूँगा कि आप ground level पर हम जैसे लोगों की जो भी मदद चाहिए हम देने के लिए तैयार हैं हमारे जैसे हजारों मैनुफैक्चर एस और मैकेनिक्स अवेलेबल हैं उनको आपको पूरी अवेयरनेस दे करके ही तब्दीली लाएंगे जैसा 2010 में हमारा मिशन कामयाब हुआ है ऐसे ही टाइम में हम आने वाले समय भी कामयाब हो पाए पॉलिसी बन जाए कि मिनिमम जी डब्ल्यू पी इससे कम वाला रेफ्रिजरेंट लेके आना है तो वो आर एन डी में आएगा कि नया रेफ्रिजरेंट जो भी आए लिमिट से कम वाला होना चाहिए एक डिसीजन होना चाहिए कि वी आर गोइंग फॉर दिस if there is a clear policy that we are going to deal with two refrigerants or three refrigerants everybody will go for that so it reduces cost for everyone and it will be more safe for everyone to understand such forthcoming challenges and policy preferences to encourage this transition we interviewed 60 industry stakeholders across india's air conditioning and refrigeration supply chains These interviews were informed by studies on regulations in place around the world as well as extensive consultations with government and civil society experts. As a result of the research that we've undertaken with NEA, um there are three key um policy findings um that emerged. The first one is that without long-term, medium-term and short-term policy certainty, industry is not going to invest towards this transition. the second thing was this sense of there not being enough awareness or information about what this transition really is about um so we need information that is catered to industry as a first so that they can initiate the transition because they will lie at the heart of this transition the second um awareness package if i may needs to lend itself towards the end user so that the consumer understands what it is that they are buying what is the implication of that purchase and why their consumer behavior needs to change 
and finally this information needs to percolate itself towards the servicing sector these are technicians who are going to be dealing with a new set of refrigerants and for safety purposes for them to know how to initiate good servicing practices with different refrigerants training needs to be uh, accorded to them um, but for all of those things to happen the government needs to be able to package the information around this transition properly and disseminate it quite widely finally um, a very interesting uh, piece of research that emerged from our study was the choice of policy that industry chose um, for how they want the government to mandate um, this transition within India wherein for every application uh, that utilizes refrigerants for heating or for cooling or for refrigeration, place a limit, an upper limit on this value for every application. So that industry is then free to choose a refrigerant that they would like to use within those applications. Of course, we want to make sure that the refrigerants that are being brought out are commercially viable, they are commercially available. They are regulated through reporting and verification of how much stock is actually available in the country. It's only when all of these things come together that the policy will actually be able to be successful. A domestic policy that enables India to meet its Kigali commitments can yield multiple gains in our quest to cool. Through our research, five areas of co-benefits emerged. India's GDP, jobs, make in India, doubling of farmers' income and energy efficiency. India is expected to become one of the world's largest air conditioning markets. And with that, the opportunities to invest in reskilling, job creation, manufacturing, cold chain development and energy efficiency can also gather momentum. Capitalizing on these opportunities and several more is possible especially if policy is developed with different government agencies and stakeholders coming together. There is a very simple question which has difficult answers. The simple question is how do we cool India with less warming? That is the challenge before all citizens, not just policymakers. When we are trying to cool down the world's second largest country by population, uh, we cannot just do it in a top-down way. We have to understand the past, anticipate the future, and try and figure out the solutions now. Our people's growth, aspirations, productivity, and well-being depends on cooling more with less warming. India demonstrated its leadership globally at Kigali. It's time now to bring it home.